What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are heading to the UK to the Maker Central and we got to make something awesome to take with us. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon. We got a ton of cool stuff coming up you're not going to want to miss. Also, we have free exclusive content. All you got to do is be on the email list. There's a link in the description below. Hey guys, so here's what we got. We got this six foot slab of flame box elder that we picked up. Our buddy Andrew's place reclaimed secrets in Las Vegas. We've got a big split here that has developed. So now we got to try and figure out what part of the board we're going to use. There's some details there on how to figure all that out. That's what we're going to get into next. So this is a section we're thinking. Now this has got a big, huge crack here. Normally speaking, we would just fill that with a colored, probably a red. But the problem is we've got red, white, and blue going on on our image. So what we're gonna do is avoid this crack altogether. We're gonna pick out a piece somewhere in this area and then we're gonna cut it to size. Then we'll find out how big the image is gonna be. So we're all set for our layout process. We're gonna use our inkjet transfer process. You're gonna see us do it, but if you really want an in-depth video on it, just click on this link up here and it'll show you all of the down and dirty details. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is a little bit different than what we normally do here. We're gonna do it by color. So we're gonna do all the blue stuff first, then we're gonna mask that off, spray it, and then we're gonna move on to the red, the stripes and that kind of stuff. So here we go. We started off with the carving liner at about an eighth of an inch deep. Now, the thing about doing these stars or really any small image where there's a lot of them, it's really easy to start off nice and slow and methodical on the first one, but by the time you get to the 35th or 50th one, you're just kind of knocking them out. You want to do your best not to do that because the final product, you can definitely see where you put more effort and less effort. So make sure if you need to take a break or something, take a break. Remember, the final product is what really counts. Once we were done with the carving liner doing the stars, Dad put in the profile bit at a quarter of an inch deep. Now you'll notice that Dad's going really slow here. This whole field of stars probably took close to 45 minutes. It really, really was kind of tedious. One thing to remember about the depth of your bits is that the deeper you go, the wider it's going to be because it has a V groove. You can see that Dad got real close to the bottom line of the field right there but he didn't go past that line. Because we're gonna go and take all of that out, you wanna make sure that anything that's gonna be outset, you get as straight a line as you can. I just want to mention here guys that even though the video shows that dad knocked this line out kind of in one pass, that has more to do with editing than anything. He always goes back and he gets as close to the line and he cleans them up a little bit, which is really important.
Now you can see here that these shapes have really sharp points to them. But what dad does is he gets the majority of the lines done. Then he goes back and he just drops in and kind of feathers those points to get them as sharp as he can with the profile bit. Once all the profiling is done, Dad put in the 90 degree at 3 16 of an inch deep. Now even though it's 3 16 deep, you can see that most of the field that he's doing here, he's not actually dropping it all the way down. He's got the left side of the router up the majority of the time in here because those stars are so close together. So he wants to make sure to get all of the wood out without hitting anything that he doesn't want to hit. Then he just goes in and removes the rest of the wood inside the carving. Because this is going to be two different colors and it's all going to be sprayed, there's nothing going to be painted, we did this individually. So we carved all the blue and then taped off everything around it and sprayed it. Now the taping is kind of tedious, but it really does help to tape before you carve the other colors. That way you have more flat surface to adhere the tape to. For the colors we used Marsh Spray Ink. This stuff's a little bit expensive, but it works really well and it doesn't bleed. Now you can use other paints as well. Just make sure that it's not gloss or satin. It has to be matte or flat finish. Otherwise it's going to bleed into whatever overspray you have. Next we started on carving the red portion of it and I used the carving liner at an eighth of an inch deep. Now I probably could have gone with the profile bit but these had some super sharp corners and I really wanted to make sure to get those angles correct. Next I put in the profile bit at a quarter of an inch deep and I went and followed those same lines to give myself some good room to take out the rest of the wood with the 90. Now again, the depth is really important here because if you carve too shallow, number one, you're going to have high spots when you go to sand it off, but number two, it just doesn't look as good. The deeper you can go, then the better it looks. It gives it a much more three dimensional look. Once we were done with the profiling, then we used the 90 degree to take out the remainder of the wood. Unfortunately, instead of hitting record, I hit pause, so we didn't get that on camera. But you guys get the general idea. The main thing about taping off for the red is that anywhere that the two lines meet, you've got to push it down and make sure that that tape gives you a good solid line just like painting anything else. Once all the painting was done, we used the disc sander with 60 grit disc to get the most of the paint off. 
Now you want to be really careful and have a light touch with this thing, otherwise it's very possible to nick something, especially the stars when you go in and you try to get all that paint off. Then we used a 120 grit on the random orbital, took our time, that's big, take your time, and got the rest of the paint off to give it a nice smooth finish. All right, we're really happy with the way this is coming out so far. We got a little star bond work to do. We've got a couple of cracks that want to make sure we don't get bubbles coming out of. So we've got a little star bond repair gap filler to do. We used the medium thickness star bond and just filled those cracks up and used the accelerator to make sure it hardens and you don't have to wait 24 hours. If you guys haven't tried this stuff, you've got to try it. I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, so now it's time to pour. We've got this thing sealed up. I think we put five coats of clear on this thing. We sealed up all of the grooves, the star bond to make sure we didn't have any, hopefully any bubbles come up on us. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill all the carving areas with clear epoxy. This is gonna be a little bit different than what we've done in the past, but we really have a vision of how this thing is gonna look. Let's get this carving filled with epoxy. Now this took some time because we didn't flatten the board out and get a good surface on it. It has a bit of a bowl shape to it. So we wanted to make sure that we filled this stuff up as much as possible without having it all run into the center. It was a bit of a challenge and we definitely will flatten the board next time we do something like this. All right, guys, this thing is ready to start power carving. So let me explain what we've done up until this point. We should have flattened this thing out completely before we started. Uh, that was a mistake on my part. Because it has kind of a bowl shape to it, I had to pour it three or four times to get everything filled. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna power carve it, then we're gonna seal it, and then we're gonna come back with one final flood pour. Power carving has turned into one of our favorite things to do. Number one, you get to use a dangerous tool, which for me is always a good time. Number two, it gives it such a cool three-dimensional look and there's so many different options of what you can do. To remove the majority of the wood, we use the Cuts All Extreme Coarse Shaping Dish. This thing takes off wood like nobody's business. And as you can see right here, you can get really fine detail with it. It takes some practice and like I said, it's a little dangerous. So make sure you wear a face shield and make sure you wear leather gloves because if this thing gets a hold of your hand, you're not getting it back. To smooth everything out, I actually used the disc sander with 120 grit and it gave it a super smooth finish. It takes off a lot of wood, but that extreme coarse dish, it leaves some swirls. So you want to go back with some fine sandpaper and smooth it out. All right, guys, so hopefully we're down to the end here. We're going to do this one last final flood pour, hopefully if all goes right. So what I've done here is I've had to fill in two or three times off camera. So we have some unevenness on the top, but with this flood pour, it should completely level everything out. Cause remember this stuff is self leveling. So we're using the super gloss and I've mixed 16 ounces, eight and eight, and uh, we should be good to go. So here, You can see that the epoxy that's already on there is real foggy. 
When you're doing a flood pour over another pour, you've got to sand it and scuff it up. And you don't have to worry about how it looks because the new flood pour you put on is going to cover all those micro scratches and it's going to give it a smooth glass finish. guys all right there it is we got it all done that flood pour came out fantastic super happy with it this thing was a challenge we had some serious issues with it but dad fought through it while i went outside and hit stuff but man it came out great so guys as you're watching this we are in the uk right now which is the may 9th and we will be in birmingham on the 13th and 14th for maker central so don't miss it we're gonna have this sign with us we're going to be giving it away to somebody. We don't know exactly how that's going to work. And we're going to be recreating this on a different board. Yeah, don't miss it. If you're in the UK, definitely come to Maker Central. It's going to be a blast. Thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully we will see you guys at Maker Central. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.